Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we will be making this recursive subdivision effect in Blender 3.0. To start out, let's make a new cube, bring it over here, and add in a new geometry node. So now we want to use a separate geometry node to separate a couple of these faces from the rest of them. So to do that, let's select faces and add in a random value node. Let's set this to boolean so it just gives us a 0 or 1 value and hook it into the selection input. As we can see, it's already separating some of the faces. Now what we want to do now is subdivide a few of those. So go into mesh and click subdivide mesh. As we can see, these faces are now subdivided. Let's have the inverted one be the subdivided one. And now let's rejoin all these pieces of the geometry. So as we can see here, the effect is already working, but it's only one level. We want it to be several levels. So let's select all of these nodes and click group and make group. So as we can see here, it's all contained in this nice handy dandy little node group. So let's copy this and copy it about six times or so. We can organize this a bit later. Put this over here. And as we can see, it's working, working pretty much perfectly. But we want a little bit more randomization in here. So what we are going to do now is hook up this value into the seed value. And then we just randomize this to whatever we want. So each iteration has a different random seed to it or random value. So now that this is done, we want to add in some particles like we could see over here. So that could be any object without being too computationally intensive. So we want, what we want to do first is go into Mesh and click Mesh to Points. So this will create a point on every vertice of this thing, but we don't want it on every vertice, we want it on every face. So we just click that and boom, we already got this working. So now what we want to do is Instance and click Instance on Points. We can see here that nothing shows up because we need to add in a cube or any object you want to this part right here. But we'll just use a cube for simplicity's sake. We can see that the scale is all messed up, but we could fix that. We go into here and go into uh, here and click Geometry Proximity. We click that into there. But we want this to be the edge instead of the face because the whole mesh's faces, while well, there'll be a little bit of distance to the edge. So now we could hook this up into here. We could already see that this is automatically scaling the objects. Let's set the scale to two on the cube. Now we could see this is working quite well. But now let's add in our own object to put into here. Let's make a cube, uh, cut this point and give it a little bit of taper on the end. This will become important later. So now what we can do is drag this cube into here and hook, uh, hook up the geometry into the instance part. So now we could see a new problem that's come up. The orientation is not correct, but there's also a way that we could fix that. Go into attribute, click transfer attribute. What we want to do now is transfer the normal to the rotation of the object. So we click vector because the normal is vector and bring in the normal input that into there and now hook this into there. As we could see, it's a little bit messed up, but we can fix that as well by using a line Euler to vector node. We hook up the normal into the vector and the rotation into there. Make sure to click Z so that the points always face up. Now we can see this effect is working very, very well. Let's just add in a, another step just to make it look a little more complex. But now as we do this, we can see that there is no shading or no random shading as we could see over there. So let's add that. Let's click this object, go into the shader editor, click new. And now let's add in a random color for each node or particle. Let's go into here, click object info. And using the node wrangler add-on, we select random. As we could see, we're already seeing random values for every single instance here. Personally, I like using uh, orange and black just because it looked good for the scene. So let's hook that into there, hook that all up, and switch this to orange. And there you go. You already have the effect. 
Now, adding in some fancy lighting and such helps when making a scene, making it look like this. And we could review that in another video, but for now, this will do just fine. Thank you for watching this little tutorial. I hope to do some more in the future. And if you want, check out my Twitter page, my Gumroad page. There's free stuff and paid stuff on there. But have a good day. I'll see you next time.